Welcome to another episode of the Unbound Book Babes. This week we're going to talk about negativity in the bookish world. Are negative reviews helpful? Are they necessary? Uh, do we even care? So, <laughs> Kristen. Yes, Bobby. We, uh, we know that we've actually filmed some reading some one-star reviews of our favorite books. So we know, and we've read quite a few uh, bad reviews here on this podcast and some of these other episodes that I'll link. What is your thought about this so-called negativity uh, in the bookish world when it comes to reviews? So... Originally, what started the idea for this podcast, or this particular episode, was you sent me a TikTok video. Um, I could not find it now. We send 500 a day. I know. Um, but uh, a creator got on there and said, there's no reason to write a review if it's less than three stars. Don't write negative reviews. Don't say negative things, right? And my knee-jerk reaction was like, I'll say whatever I want. If I didn't like the book, other people will know I didn't. But then, you know, upon reflection of it, is there, like, is there a need for these negative reviews? Uh, is a great question. One that I'm sure people smarter than I can answer. But I think my number one question in any review would be, who is the review for? Yeah. Reviews in general, not, not one specific. Not, like, when you write a book review in general. Yeah. Who is your audience? Yeah. So, I think, you know, this, this has been kind of ongoing, because one of the first times that I saw this kind of be brought up was actually by author Terlina Pucci. And she was discussing how people will come into her DMs and or tag <laughs> her in stuff and that it isn't positive or it's maybe perhaps not devil's advocate being it's supposed to be constructive criticism. But that's none her your opinion is none of her business whatsoever at all. Yeah. And go and ahead it, and link the between our interview with Trina, Trina Pucci. Yes, we will, because she is a fantastic individual, a fantastic author. She <laughs> is a great spirit. She has, She's one of those people with a good soul. So you're going to want to go and watch that because she is super funny. But she goes on to say, like, how she doesn't care whether you like her book or not. <laughs> um, don't tag her in it, which I agree with. You should not be tagging the author if you're going to be a baby back bitch about something in their book and, and voice that opinion. And she goes on to say that she doesn't mind negative reviews at all, like on Goodreads or, or Amazon, because those reviews will actually help her find her real her real readers or the readers who appreciate her work and those who will not appreciate the themes in her writing will stay away and everybody will be happy which is exactly how i think things should be yeah <laughs> exactly she's she's preaching she spoke the truth we have heard <laughs> trelina we live that so I kind of I kind of was thinking about this you know last night in in prepping for this episode and I was like what about the gray area when we're in negativity versus the explanation of a personal interpretation? Like, for example, uh, we just filmed another episode right before this and it was about poor things. <laughs> and you know, we have kind of some conflicting viewpoints in, in our discussion about, about poor things and some different personal interpretation. Um, and I think it's, I think it's really interesting that the internet is this place to share thoughts and find community, right? So 
when you're providing an honest opinion about a book, I don't necessarily see it as a bad thing, especially because a lot of these communities are of like-minded people. Uh, you know, your following is typically, people are following you because there's something relatable about you to them. Um, and I think that it prevents people from wasting their time and also trashing media. Well, in this case, we're speaking about books as the media um, that they don't jive with. And I don't see it like to Trillina's point, like negative reviews are fine because it's going to weed out, you know, those outliers that aren't going to appreciate the, the whatever the item is. Right. So um, I just I, I do think that the like you sh you should review them in the right place, like on Goodreads and Amazon, Kobo. Uh, IG and TikTok, but you do not and you should not uh, force that down the throat of the author. Because, and I, I, in everyday life, this is something that I relate to is like, I, I'm out in the world a lot in, in different places, new places. I see different people. I, of all walks of the planet, <laughs> And it's, you know, Chris and I always refer to it as the public. We love being out in the public because, you know, we're people watchers. We we observe things. Um, and I just feel like, you know, like it, it doesn't, you're not going to, you're not going to agree with what everybody's choices are. And not everyone's going to agree with my choices like when I'm something goes to shit at the airport, for an example, because this is like, I don't understand <laughs> this. And I know Chris and I have talked about this several different times. Like, you know, the weather's gone to shit. You're in the south. They don't have de-icing machines and everything's <laughs> canceled. And this one guy is freaking out because the zipper on his bag is fucked up. And, you know, what is the classification for that mental illness? What is the classification that the world has melted down around you and you're worried about a fucking zipper? Somebody tell me what that mental illness is so I can find that guy and refer him to the proper shrink. Yeah, let us know in the comments if you're that <laughs> shrink. So my point is, is that, you know, he's having a meltdown and I could very well... Be just like, things are fine. Like, this happens. This this happens. This makes sense. We're in the South. They don't have de-icing machines. Planes aren't safe to take off full of ice. I don't want to die today. I'll stay on the ground and wait till my uh, flight is rebooked. No big deal. You know, and like, <laughs> with me saying that, though, is like, my opinion of him and how he's handling that situation Shouldn't fucking matter to him. Business. None of his business. <laughs> his opinion about me being cool, calm, and collected, none of my business. He could be like, that girl's on a bunch of meds. She's she's real chill <laughs> because she's on all those meds that I hear about. You know, that's that that I'm not, for one. Probably should be. It's but your raw dog in life. <laughs> yeah. And it's raw dog in me. <laughs> 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 but my point is, is what you wear, my thoughts about what you wear, which I won't, I won't think about. I'm just not the person that will think about them. But other people who do, not my business. When people see me walk through a store and like la 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 and spin in circles and dance like a little weirdo that I am, <laughs> their opinions of what I'm on is none of my business. And I think that should be... A they're still free to have those opinions. Yep. They just don't need to share them with me. Text it in your silly little group chat, as we do, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, like, you don't need to, like, stop some, Like, nobody gives a shit about your opinion. Yeah, nobody needs a... Except your I, friends and people that you've cultivated to Yeah, care. yeah, no, no. Just move on. Move <laughs> on. Say your piece to your friends in private. 
and move on. Like, I don't know. You know my, the type of reviews that I hate more than, okay, let me, the caveat is I've never written a book, so I've never had somebody come into my DMs and be like, I can't believe you wrote the character like this. Okay, there's the caveat to what I'm about to say. Yep. Uh, my least favorite kind of reviews are people that say, one star, not my cup of tea. Yeah. That is the most nothing review. Who cares? It's not an airport. Don't announce your departure. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. I And I'm just like, but why was it not your cup of tea? Can you, can you, because <laughs> it might not be my cup of tea either. And I, that's what I'm here to find out. But you're not providing me any contextual information to, to understand. Or it might be my cup of tea. And when you explain why it's not, I could be like, oh, yeah. I mean, I do believe one-star reviews are what convinced me to read Haunting Adeline. I don't think a one-star review has ever convinced me to read anything, but I don't... <laughs> I go in blind, people though. Are like, people are like, nah, gross. And I'm like, yep, that's... I'll take it. <laughs> exactly! <laughs> exactly! That is the point. Like, that is... That's the point of reviews for for other readers, right? And, like... If the author gave a shit what you thought about their work... They would have sent you an arc and asked for your opinions. You'd be in that inner circle mm -hmm. that got the book prior to the release date. So mm -hmm. if you did not receive an arc from an author or a beta, they don't give a shit what you think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, and I'm someone who goes in blind, like... <laughs> I always have been. I've always been for whatever reason. It's like, don't don't judge a book by its cover, but why do you think I bought this? I saw this on the shelf at Barnes and well, Noble. It's a beautiful setup to show off this book. Beautiful segue. <laughs> and I <Yes>. thank you. <laughs> and I saw this book and I was like, I don't know what you are, but I gotta have you. I gotta have you. It, and then it also kind of matches your aesthetic for the day. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just who I am. <laughs> but then I read the, you know, the the little synopsis. Um, and they don't tell you much of anything. They don't... Look how freaking huge this book is. Do you think these words actually mean anything? Like, really, truly are going to show you the story? Like, this is... How many pages are in this? I didn't even look. Again, blind. <laughs> 650 pages first in a new series and i'm diving in and i bought this sucker like I, I i buy and i read things for very different reasons than a lot of people is i guess my point point. and so and i'm just one of millions of readers in the world and i know there's people like me i also know that there's people who are like what are the tropes what are the trigger warnings you know i need to make sure that Nothing on there is going to throw me off. And I'm just like, I guess I'll find out when I finish the book what it's all about. <laughs> Here's another unpopular opinion. Um, tropes and trigger warnings ruin the story. I agree with that. I kind of agree with that. I don't want to know. Because if you know. go in knowing it's enemies to lovers, the initial conflict, boom. 600 pages later, lovers. Yeah. I don't want to know the tropes, for sure. Like, I, I really don't like tropes. I didn't know tropes were a thing. Can we talk about this really quick? So, like... What are they short for? Tropolina? If you want to see more content like this, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified every time we upload. It really helps us out. I don't know. Let's Google that. We're together. What <laughs> are tropes in books... Trope in literary terms is a plot device or character attribute that is used to so commonly in the genre that it is seen or commonplace or conventional. For example, a trope in superhero stories is a villain who wants to take over the world. Where does trope originate? Where does the term trope originate from? Origins. The term trope derive. This is just like Wikipedia definition here. But it says trope for literature, so I'm, I'm guessing it it is what we're looking for. Origins. The, tro the term trope derives from the Greek tropos, a turn, a change related to the root of a verb 
trepen, to turn, to direct, to alter, to change. This means that the term is used metaphorically to denote, among other things, metaphorical language. Hmm. So it is... Here's another one. Pardon my redundancy. Uh, what does trope stand for? Trope is a literary, literary concept, concept, meaning the repetitive use of a word, plot device, theme, image, or figure. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know. I've been a big reader for so much of my life. I had no idea what a trope was until <laughs> book talk. I didn't care about any of that. I didn't know enemies to lovers or nemesis to lovers or... Uh, now it's just a hashtag. It's just... Yeah. That's all it is. It's just a it's sorting mechanism, honestly. A category? I mean, what happens... What happens if an author lies about their tropes? Well, oh, that would be fun. Right? To be like, it's enemies to lovers, and then it's like best friends to lovers instead. <laughs> so you're like, I just can't figure out how she's going to end up with that guy. And you're like, oh, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> I want someone to do that because... I think it would be funny. It'd keep you on your toes the whole time. It won't spoil the story to your point of they ruin the story. And I also didn't yeah. know what like uh all these verb all these acronyms meant, like male M F M M M C M M F uh R H uh Trad author. Uh like I uh, first of all See. M-I-A. Yeah. K-I-A. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> exactly. I come from the, like, my world, my day job, is corporate. <laughs> it is a corporate world where we have all these acronyms and everybody just throws them out. And anytime there is somebody new on the call, I interrupt and I am like, they mean this. This is what I can't think of one right now, and I don't want to like give away my business. <laughs> the industry. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to give away my business. But um, yo, know, yo, know, MIA. We'll just use that because like everyone knows that. Like, oh, this is MIA, and then you had that one, but it's you know related to something in work that is not missing in action. So you got to like st be like, sir, this means. Minute Mul inertia assembly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> and so, like, and trad. Why don't you just say traditional? Traditional author. Traditionally published author. Like, I get it, trad. You're, like, maybe it's trendy and it's cool. Which is great and fine, I guess. But, like, at the same time, it's like, you never know who your audience is. You should be clear and concise. And using acronyms is not the ticket to be clear and concise. No, but it does it does make for like a a, a club, right? Uh, yeah. So it's it's like that exclusive club of like, do you know what a KIA FMC UFC is? And you're like build an action female character fighter? And they're like, Ultimate no, fighting composition. <laughs> and also as a quick side note, I went to school with this girl named Kia, K I A. And so on her license plate, it said Kia 92. <laughs> and she's like, I bet a lot of people drive behind me being like, what war were we in that somebody was killed in action in 92? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I also hate that club. The exclusivity club? Yeah, because it's like you're trying to build a community... Like, I think there's something to be said for inclusivity. I think that trying to reach people of different backgrounds and perceptions is extremely important to human development. Uh, because, like, and even just people that aren't on book talk eight hours a day and are just stopping by, yeah. Right, like, my whole life isn't, like, I mean, there's people this year that read, like, 200 books. My mom. But, yeah. Oh, that's right. 
I called her a bitch for it because it's kind of not really. I didn't actually say that to her, but I was like, jealous. I can't wait till I, uh, you know, I'm retired and like have time to do things I want to do and not that I'm forced to do to pay my bills. Bills are the worst. They are. They're the bane of my existence. <laughs> but I just feel like, like, because I remember like, you know, college gets kind of a bad rap because it's liberal and all this stuff. <laughs> Sorry. But like when I traveled overseas for the first time, I happened to be in college and it was actually, you know, and it was for my German courses. So I took a German for business travel and then I took a German study abroad class that really focused on um, uh, like Germanic um, heritage. And we... Uh, there's this term, it's probably going to butcher this because I haven't said it in a long time, and it's an extremely long word, Vergangenheit Verdigun, and it has to do with, let me actually pull it up because I don't want to butcher this because it's a very beautiful thing. Let me see if I can spell it. Uh, Vergangenheit, the, oh, can I have the English definition? I understand that I typed it in, in German, but uh, the struggle to overcome the past. So we talked about some of the things that happened in German history and how the German people uh, face those things and use them to overcome the past and lead a better future. Um, so and this is where I was actually introduced to Kafka, who I mentioned in our Poor Things episode, because um, a lot of his postmodern themes kind of talk about some of this stuff. Um, so, you know, I wonder how you say it. Vergangenheitsbewältigung. Oh, huh, super close. Cool. Um, <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> um, so, I don't know. I just feel like, I don't remember where I was going with that. Again, why is my brain <laughs> like this? <laughs> It's gone so off the rails. It truly has. It truly has. But this is who we are. <laughs> we spent so much brain power on the last one that we're just like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So, this is the unhinged, unbound, unbothered, on book babes at their finest. So, I guess my point is saying is that it's none of your business. Get over it. Uh, learn from it. Move on. Oh, that's what I was saying. Like when I was when I traveled and I was like learning about this concept of coping with the past and 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 overcoming different struggles and going out into the world and seeing how other people take their history and make a change. Um, I think it is it's very empowering right to to your development as an individual it makes you think intellectually and it makes you you know consider what you say right because so we're talking about like negativity and in where where and when and if it's justifiable um and i and i do think it is because when you when you're talking about something maybe there's something happening that is not something you know you're comfortable with um and i think those are the things you should be reading the things that make you uncomfortable but like maybe there's something that like is too relatable hits too much on you triggers ptsd whatever that is i do think in those cases perhaps the the trigger warnings are valuable um and respected but i think they should be you know there for the people who need them and there and you know but you don't have you know they're not a necessity i guess um, yeah, trigger warnings is a tough topic, right? Because some people go through some crazy shit. Uh, so I guess for some people, yes, they're important to have in the book. Mm -hmm. uh, however, in reviews, in TikTok videos that are like, you should read this book because these are the trigger warnings. Like, eh, well, you ruined it. Now I know exactly what happens. Um, yeah. Because you can only unless you live through something like that, you can only be so creative about it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's that's true, too. Super true. But, you know, like, um, I think Goodreads is a really good place for negative reviews. Um, 
because you can message back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. So it becomes less of a negative review and more of just a discussion. Yeah. Yep. Solid you know, conversation. Uh, an author's DMs, the the comment section of an author's personal page, tagging. Like, what is the point of tagging the author? What What is the point of that? I don't get it. Like, okay, you want them to see it. But do you want them to share it? Do you think you're going to get famous off of this negative review? Because what? Like it's so well crafted, the author's going to go, oh my god, you're right. I shouldn't have had those two end up together. I should have done it your way. Like what do you think is going to happen when you contact these authors? What, what's going to happen? Okay, let me just pull that book back out of production, rewrite the character the way you suggested. And then I'll pay the publisher to do it all over again. Like, you stupid motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. It's not going to change, like, the author's perception of their work. It's not going to change the value that that author uh, puts on their work. Uh, because they had... for. I would think that, like, for every one negative review, there's ten great reviews, you know? And yeah. those 10 that are positive are going to speak so much louder to the point than one negative review. I mean, that's a societal problem where, like, yo, know, the majority gets the megaphone. But um, in this case, I think it's a good thing. You know, but to have those negative reviews that mean more of, like... I read the entire book, this part I didn't like, this part I didn't like. An actual dissection that is open for discussion as opposed to, oh, and that's the other thing. Some of these reviews don't have anything to do with the work itself. They're just like a personal attack on the author. Like, who is this for? You really think like, look, I'll just use SJM because she's one of the biggest authors today mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and she's polarizing do i like i don't agree with her selling different bonus chapters and different books and stuff like that but i would never get on goodreads and be like sjm and then attack her personality in a review of one of her books she's a fucking stranger she's a stranger like, to you just because you read her literature does not mean you fucking know her as a human well, and she's not the one on review. Her work is. Yes. Right? Like, when we talk about... I'm trying to think of, like, literally anybody. Um, I guess it's really hard to draw that line, because I was going to say Picasso, but we do talk about his personal life a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, trying to think of literally any author that we don't talk about their personal <laughs> life. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh all right. I'll backtrack a little bit that it is hard to draw that line between work and artist. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that when you're going to a place like Goodreads to review, people are going there to review, re read reviews on the book. They aren't. Mm -hmm. People can have their own perception about the writer, right? Because mm -hmm. oftentimes, like, going back to the SJM I think thing. I read it. <laughs> yeah yeah that's great yes do that uh, like sjm is polarizing there's some things and i never know how i feel about her i think she's got a brilliant writing i think she's a brilliant writer i think but her as a person in the interviews i see like she can be very polarizing and i'm always like i don't know about i don't know i just don't know where my feelings land but again she's a stranger and, but if I'm going to, like, read a review on one of her less lesser-known books, Catwoman, I'm going to go th <laughs> I'm gonna go there and I'm going to read reviews about the book because I want to know if it's worth reading it or if it speaks to me yeah. in some way. I know SJM to be polar. Like, we could use Brandon Sanderson. He's another very popular author. He, I don't know much of anything about his personal life. Um, but if I'm going to 
you know, read a review on the second second book in Mistborn, uh, Well of Ascension, I'm going there to find out if it's worth picking up the second book. I I mean, I read the first one. I think it is. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, that series ended up being really long, uh, ended up turning into two series. But I'm not going there to find out about him if I wanted to find out about him, I would look up things. I would go to Google and go to his Wikipedia page. I'm not going to Goodreads for that. Exactly. Time and a place for yep. topics. Yep. And if you feel that strongly about it, get a microphone, get a camera, start a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> link, link down below for our website of our startup package that we use for a microphone and a and a <laughs> webcam if you need it if you want it it's Boom. on our placement it's on our recommendations <laughs> page it's pretty affordable it's about less than a hundred dollars consider yourselves influenced cool <laughs> <laughs> so All right i think we're going in circles oh we are. We yeah. We 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 we, we <laughs> did something with this episode. <laughs> this episode may never see the light of day, but we'll see. We'll see. The overarching theme: don't take the author. Leave your reviews in the right places. Don't take it personally. It's just a book. It's just. It's. It's not that. It's not that serious. It really isn't. Um, Thanks for hanging in here with us. Uh, <laughs> be sure to check out our Poor Things episode. If you haven't, it's quite interesting. Uh, we have conflicting viewpoints on a few things. Um, it was very fun to film. It's a little bit longer. And until next time, keep reading. <laughs>